thanks to the members of the public for coming this evening and our vote is out there. Um, my name is Councillor Denise Reilly and I'm the Deputy Chair of the Planning Committee. Uh, unfortunately, the Chair does send her apologies to Stella Well. Um, my role this evening is to ensure the committee runs smoothly, having regard to procedure and behaviour and ethics. To explain who, who the rest of the people are on the table here tonight, to my immediate right, Council solicitors who will give advice to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that may arise. To my left are the council planning officers, highways engineer and environmental health officer who will, who will present the applications this evening and give any technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people who you see on both sides of the tables are elected members who will consider the application, this is the applications made this evening and make the decisions. Before each planning application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualifying petition by 25 signatories or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes and only five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make presentations to the committee in support of their application. Okay, up to five minutes. However, if the petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant nor their agent will be invited to make representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to any application. The ward councillor may speak for as long as they wish. However, once the ward councillor is sat down in the public gallery, they may not return to the to, and take part in any of the debates that may follow by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and the discussion by members of the planning committee who will then make a decision on the application. The order of tonight's agenda may vary, subject to the numbers of people who are here in relation to the specific agenda item and subject to committee agreeing to the order being varied. If a site visit is requested and approved by the committee this evening, then that matter will not be discussed any further tonight. The matter will be discussed at a subsequent meeting once the planning committee has visited the site. Anyone here this <coughs> evening for the item welcome, are welcome to leave if you wish or, you, or if you want to stay. Okay, so agenda item one. the minutes of the last meeting. <coughs> No, no problem. Thank you, Chair. They are okay. as far back as they are. Okay. Anyone in the second of you? Declarations of it. Declarations of interest. Yeah. No declarations of interest. Request for site visits.
first item on tonight's agenda. <coughs> Are members agreed that I can change the order of yes. the agenda this evening? Yes. Thank you. was subject to a member's site visit last Friday. Permission is sought for the demolition of the existing school and the erection of a new school and sports hall. The demolition of the existing school will take place once the new school building has been erected. The existing school sits in the centre of the site with playing fields located to the east, south and west of the buildings. The existing building has been expanded over time uh, but are now unfit for purpose and do not provide a modern learning environment. The proposal is to replace these buildings with a new, modern and fit for purpose building and separate sports hall. The new building will be three storeys and located at the rear of the site. The present school buildings are some 130 metres from the nearest dwellings on Balmoral Road and Dorchester Way. The new school will be 48 metres away from those properties. The minimum separation distance expected for a two-storey building would be 21 metres. This distance would increase by two metres for every metre difference in height. Having regards to the proposed height of the new school building at just under 12 metres tall, a minimum separation distance of between 28 and 30 metres would be expected. So at just over 48 metres, that distance is comfortably achieved. The design of the new school is modern, with clean lines, and would result in a cube-like structure with relief achieved by use of different materials and fenestration. Materials proposed include brickwork, render, and cladding. A separate sports hall is proposed located in front of the main school building and lower in height. An existing curved-shaped community building will be retained. Parking, layout and access to the site remain as existing and the capacity of the school in terms of pupil numbers remains unchanged. Once the new buildings have been built, the existing school buildings will be demolished and then this area will, will be green landscaped. The proposals are considered to be acceptable in both planning policy terms and having regard to potential impacts on nearby surrounding properties. The site is already used as a school, and separation of distances achieved result in any impacts being kept to a minimum. Concerns have also been raised about any access to the school site via the southern boundary. Although the potential for pedestrian access along this point was explored and discussed with applicants, it was discounted for a number of reasons, including a number of trees along this boundary that are subject to preservation order, the area is used for foraging by bats, which are a statutory protected species, and access at this point has the potential to create, to create noise and disturbance issues to the residents of residential properties uh, adjacent to the site at this point. On balance, the proposals are considered to result in a new school and ancillary facilities that are modern and fit for purpose. The proposals are recommended for approval, and there is a qualifying petition. Thank you, Matthew. Is there a petitioner present? Can you yes. please come up, sir? And you're allowed to speak to up to five minutes, so can you state your name again? Yes, There's a little button on the, on the microphone there. Five minutes, can you state your name and address, please? Yes, uh, my name is Daniel McCassie. Daniel McCassie, 15 Night Street, from my uh, house, back to the screen. school. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the uh, coming to the uh, site. It was uh, very nice to see you. Uh, 
to you. Um, there's a number of things I've uh, brought up. Uh, as you did mention, that uh, between the house and the school, which is going to be built, there are a number of trees and uh, they have that in. There's no doubt about that. We've had a survey done. The survey done was done by the school, it was only put around the school. It, it wasn't done on the site where the bats are. And it did say that there were visiting bats, but no one found out where the bats were coming from. And they lived in those trees. And as you know, it's a European directive, uh, 209, <coughs> which prohibits the disturbance of any bats. The other point I'd like to make is the <coughs> Jacobs, who carried out a survey on the land. Um, I don't know if you know about it, but there is a high risk of ordnance, unexploded ordnance on the site. I don't know if anyone is aware of that. No? It does say in Jacob's report, which is a 52 page report. Uh, sorry. Sorry, turn the mic Just turn the microphone off. Oh, Sorry, through you, Chair. If you could just get through the presentation, okay, it's yeah. not an answering question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, there's, we seem to be... Can you put your microphone back on? <laughs> we, we seem to be a, a, a confusion over the height of the building. Uh, we have a plan here which clearly states that the building is going to be 26.98 metres high. And I heard you mention it's going to be 12 metres. So can you tell me what the discrepancy is? I know it's not an answer to the question thing, but I think we need to know what the height is because according to these plans, it's 26, which is 88 feet high. Yes, the officer has just mentioned in his report that it was going to be 12 metres high. That is the height of the new build. 12 metres, not 26 metres or whatever you've got there. Well. I, this, this was given to us by the school. Okay. As I said, the, all the residents are in favour of the school, it's just where it's going to be put. It's going to be in your face, it's going to be overburdening, especially for the people who have bedroom windows backing on. It should not be put there. You've got two fields either side of that school where you can put the school on, or on the existing site. I don't understand why you want to put it the furthest away from the road. You've got, you'll have security problems, without a doubt. You're pushing everything at the back and in our face, and it, it should not be allowed. You know, we get these the committees together, and you should make the right decisions for, for the people, not, not just for the money. As I say, everyone's in favour of the school, they all want the school, but it's where it's sited. And we were told that when it was a site visit that on one side of the school, one side of the field, there's a covenant. And I know covenants can be overturned. So you've got two places that we could go quite easily. And the third option is the site of the school, where, where it is now. Have you finished now? Yeah, I have. Yeah, there's not much more to say. because. It's not a question and answer, as you said. Mike, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, applicants or the agents for a retreat. Thank you. Could you please state your name? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Sarah Humber. I'm from the Education and Funding Agency. Um, I'm a project lead for the Northwest Private Finance <coughs> Branch, um, which is being considered under the Priority School Building Programme, or PSBP. I'm here to explain the importance of Bridgeway High School for achieving uh, planning approval this evening. The Northwest Private Finance Batch is a group of, um, it's a project to rebuild a group of 12 schools, both primary and secondary, across the northwest of England. The schools must all achieve planning permission at approximately the same time, and the contract must be signed on the same day in March for all 12 schools um, to ensure that the finance can be accessed and the schools can be built in line with the agreed programme. Any delay to that contract signature is likely to lead to a more significant delay um, 
due to the election. Under the present plan, Ridgeway High School is due to be completed by summer 2017. In the event that the planning commission is not achieved by the end of January for all 12 schools, uh, the future of any delayed schools in the project um, would have to be seriously considered by the Education Funding Agency. Um, failure to grant planning commission this evening and the subsequent removal of the school potentially from the scheme would represent a significant cost to the public purse and repaying development costs to the contractor, from which the school and the local community would gain no benefit. And any possibility of future funding to rebuild the bridgeway would be uncertain as the proposed scheme would be shelved and any new scheme would have to start from scratch. The inclusion of Ridgeway High School um, in this project represents a £12 million capital investment in education on the rural. The Ridgeway School Design and Site Lab has evolved after a detailed design process and pre application discussions with officers to ensure any potential adverse impacts are mitigated. Um, we hear that there are objections from neighbouring properties and that there is a petition against the development arising from the proposed location of the new school on the site. Just to clarify the school, um, that plan did state from six metres above sea level. The actual height of the school is um, 11.85 metres. Um, the position of the new school on the site has been restricted by the required attention of the CLC, the Community Learning Centre building, um, the location of the existing school and restricted covenants on the playing fields that sit on either side of the site that it was not possible to remove. The new building is therefore positioned behind the existing school with a new college green located in front of the new building. Um, this will create a new public frontage to the school by the necessary area around the CLC and enable the school to create a new school boundary to ensure the safety of its pupils. To minimise the impact on surrounding housing and to provide a secure, inviting and inclusive site, uh, we are proposing to maintain the existing, existing access point on North Trawlers Avenue, retain and enhance the playing fields by providing level access for inclusivity, reinforce the existing mature planting to act as a buffer between the school and the adjacent housing, and to create a new campus green for possible future performance space opposite CLC. On a personal note, I've worked with Tony, the head teacher, and Liz, the deputy head, throughout this process. And they have maintained an inspirational vision for the practical delivery of education in this new school building that will further enrich the lives of the children it serves. They need this building so that they can continue to deliver top class education without having resources diverted to maintain a failing school. This is a fabulous once in a lifetime opportunity for the local community to benefit from a brand new energy efficient school and sports hall building funded by central government. Uh, accordingly, we would respectfully urge members to approve this application this evening as recommended by officers. Thank you, Sarah. All councillors, would you like to speak, George? Just for a second. Thank you. First of all, Chair, can I, can I say a big thank you to the on the committee for the site visits. Uh, it's, I think it's good that you actually turn out and look at these things and see how um, the people who are objecting as well as the people who are proposing uh, give uh, an overall view and you get a better view of where it is and what the problems are. I think the petitioner uh, summed it up for me in, in one context. Uh, there's no one I know, no one, against this school. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for people in Oxford and people who work in Head. Uh, it's a fantastic, you know, <coughs> I think that it's one of the best uh, opportunities we can ever offer our children and the staff and everybody else at Victoria High School. However, there are certain things that I, I think could have been done better. Uh, and in particular, um, this, this point where we're at now. Um, the residents themselves were not aware of this until some two months ago, where the actual sighting was going to take place. And it was at that point that they contacted themselves and the other two board councillors and asked if there was anything we could do. By that time, and I think it's already been explained by the agent, um, the, the actual site to the, um, to the right, to the top, that sports field, I think, would have been the ideal spot for that school to be, to be built on. It could have had access from the natural avenue straight in, straight out. Um, but nevertheless, at this present moment in time, that's what we're offering. There are one or two 
points that I just wanted to make. I think you've highlighted the, the fact here about the, the height that's just been explained. Um, I just wanted to understand one or two things. I believe it's, it's also one of the conditions of um, how it's been explained to me. I've got my answer this. But what the school has to also include two sheltered bus stops as part of this scheme. I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is true, um, and if you could actually verify that, I think Matthew is the first thing. Um, I would like to see, to be honest with you, I mean, bus stops, all they will do is cause um, a problem on an area outside of school time. I'm not saying about the school stops, but outside of school time, we use or use all the bus shelters as a means of congregation. And I object to that in some ways that being put up there. Um, and, and I think that we've had plenty of problems on the estate itself, which is obviously not so expected. So I just didn't want that to take place. And I think that um, the, 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 it's only been mentioned about security. I think that's fine. You know, um, I, I, I wonder what is going to take the place of, and one of the questions I would ask is, what is going to take the place of the old school? When the old school is gone, what will the functions look like? Okay, and that's, that's the question I don't know. So there's bus stops, there's the front of the school, um, and, and I would say, first of all, um, as I said, I don't think, I, I, I couldn't find an objection to the school. Absolutely first class facilities and everything else. I just wish it would have had the time um, to, to really develop this better with all parties concerned. So therefore, I would have thought that we could have moved that school in a different way. But it's only been mentioned, in some ways it's a fait accompli, because the simple fact that it was turned down tonight, um, Ridgeway would be um, taken, could be taken out of the scheme of, of delegation for the 12 schools, which we mentioned. And I don't think anyone wants to see that. So um, I'll leave it in the hands of the very good um, planning committee who um, had the opportunity. As I said, the number of people who turned up that, that site visit was one of the best I've ever seen. So um, thank you again. And I'll leave it in your hands. Thank you. about securing the upgrading of the existing bus stops that are already there. Um, in terms of what the school would look like then um, from, from the front, I mean for those of you who were at the site visit on, on Friday, um, with, without appearing to sound rude, I don't think there can be any doubt that the existing buildings are not the most attractive um, um, buildings. Um, and, and so what is proposed to replace um, the existing school buildings is, is a, a modern, um, more fit for purpose building that is located uh, further away from Nocturum uh, Avenue. So. So this is where the new school um, will be located. As I said um, in my presentation, it's just over 48 metres from the nearest residential property um, at the back. And our normal separation distances would require that distance to be anywhere between 28 and 30 metres. So it is in excess of um, the normal separation distance that you would require. There's a, a curved shaped building um, here which is a community use building, that's to be retained. Um, and for those of the, you who are on site, that was the pinky coloured building on site. The car parking um, and access arrangements will stay as they are. Um, and then there's a new sports hall here. Um, and as the, uh, the applicant's agent made reference to, 
the existing school building, which is roughly in this location at the moment, will, de will be demolished and green landscaped. So it will be a much more attractive um, vista when well, viewed from Nocturum Avenue. Um, in terms of what the, the school will look like, um, that's a, um, a computer generated image of the front of the building. Um, so the materials which are key to making the, um, the building look as impressive as it is, um, it's brickwork, render and cladding. Um, there are other elevations that I can show members if you want, um, but essentially it, it, is, it is similar um, on all elevations. Um, so, so that explains, I think, um, the points that uh, Councillor Davis has picked up on. Can you give examples of covenants? Well, as members know, covenants are not strictly a planning issue. They're not material to the determination of a planning um, application. Having said that, however, there are covenants um, on the site that have restricted where this building can go. Um, and as, as I said, covenants are not a planning issue. It would be for the school and the agents to explore whether those covenants that, um, could be lifted. And I think from the, um, the agent's presentation that that has already been done and, and there are some difficulties with those covenants being lifted. Um, the other thing is that there are existing sports um, pitches and playing fields um, on the existing site, um, which also um, limit where the school building could go. Um, because if you were to start to build on existing sports pitches or playing fields, um, then you would get a statutory objection from Sports England, and you would then have to look about replacement facilities. So there are a number of issues which have already been explored um, and, and this is why the school needs to go where it, it needs to go. And, and obviously one of the other reasons is um, uh, the existing school won't be demolished until the new school is built. Thank you, Matthew. Right, so to committee. <coughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. That was a very, very helpful site. It, it, it put into contact all the concerns that were expressed by everybody. Um, the building clearly looks a lot better than some of us might imagine having seen the elevation that has been presented to us, including those parts of the school which are immediately um, adjacent, if you like, or 48 metres away, or something like 48 metres away from the houses that appear to be concerned about the imposition. From our point of view, because the separation distances have been met, we could not use separation distances as a reason for turning down this application. I think that's about the only um, reason that could possibly be put forward. We cannot redesign the school, we cannot turn this down and tell them to go away and build something else without losing the opportunity for this school to be developed at all. Okay, um, with the benefit of hindsight it might have been better located in a different place on the site, but that isn't what we're presented with. We are presented with an application which looks to all intents and purposes as though it's valid, I can't see any reason for turning it down, and the site visit did endorse my view of that. So I was certainly supporting the application in its present form because I don't see any valid reason for refusing it. Anybody else, Stuart? Yeah, I, I, I agree with David. It was useful uh, in the moment to see uh, from the position where the houses are. Uh, the, the outlook that they were getting. I think it's, I think it's fairly clear to me that there's, there's been a degree of confusion in terms of the height uh, of the building with the plans mm. that possibly one by having the data of sea level. Uh, that probably would have been more useful to just have the data as the um, as the existing ground that it's on. But at least you know everybody would have a, a reasonable idea uh, of of the heights. But clearly, if, you know, if people read something that suggests it's going to be 26 metres high, then, you know, pairs will get too long and, and it becomes quite difficult. But I understand, you know, sea level is a, is a, a, a usual, a, a data that is used, um, and it's, it's unusual, I think, to, um, uh, to, to, to have it as, as the reference point in, in a place like this. I'm not entirely convinced that moving the um, the block, if, if you like, to the to the to the east of the existing school would be satisfactory. Because that land to the east is raised uh, as it is, um, which would mean you put a three-storey school 
on a raised piece of land, <coughs> which is about story high. Um, I suppose to turn objections from the houses, the foot, uh, onto uh, Avenue um, at, that, uh, at that point. I do agree with uh, George's point about the, um, the planning game that we're seeking um, under Condition 4 um, to uh, upgrade the bus stops effectively and put shelters um, there. Um, I agree there ought to be a sustainable transport obligation on the funding of that. So I can't agree with that. Uh, and I had raised the point with, with my three brothers uh, that, um, that cycling might have been a better um, option to go down. I'm not going to press the point uh, because I, I can't. Uh, I don't think it's appropriate necessarily just to make up conditions as we, as we go along. Suffice it to say uh, that the funding authority of the school, the applicant, is aware that there's an obligation for sustainable transport. The one that's in front of us at the moment is for bus stops. Um, I would have thought, you know, conditions can be altered. We do know this. Hopefully, the, uh, the developer will enter into some sort of discussion as to whether bus stops is the most appropriate one. Uh, and listen to representation from uh, the board members, George, myself, and others, uh, as to whether something could be done within the same level uh, of funding for cyclists. So I'm, I'm not seeing this as an approval of condition 14, and, and now I'll have to shut up about it. I'm seeing this as an approval of uh, the relocation and rebuild of the school, where some of the other little matters. Uh, might still be able to do a little bit more tweaking. For example, when we looked out of the back window of the, uh, of the house, there was a small structure, I think, in that corner of the, uh, of the site that looked like some sort of teen shelter, which might not have been the most appropriate place to put it on the site. And again, it's, it's not that there should be some sort of shelter there, uh, somewhere on the site, but does it have to be right next to the residential property? And again, you just feel, that's not, you know, it's not the sort of thing you want to debate when you talk about the principle of a huge development like this. But it is potentially something that ward members might wish to go back to the developer for uh, to and see about those small changes in terms of the commission. So, just put those markers down. I agree with uh, with, with David's approach. I don't think it's overbearing to the uh, property. Possibly if it was if it was 20, 30 metres higher. It might have had a different uh, uh, view. It is a confusion, obviously, as, 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 as far as that's concerned. But I'm happy with those markers in place to support the application. Anybody else? The officer's recommendation is for approval. Do you have a proposer? Thank you, David. Seconder? All in favour?
Uh, the dwellings have been amended and handed to secure satisfactory protection of the amenity and minimise overlooking to existing properties on Elden Road. Dormer windows proposed in the roof will be obscurely glazed to further minimise overlooking. The garage building will be converted into five flats, four two-bed and one one-bed. The existing footprint will remain largely as existing with a small reduction at the northwestern boundary to allow for improved outlook to these two flats and to allow for amenity space to be provided. Parking provision is proposed at 11 spaces, which is not quite one space per unit. Access to the site will be via a single means of access by a relative road uh, in between numbers 16, 18 and 20. That's here on the plan. Um, access to the site via Overton Road at the rear will be prevented by the road being closed off and fenced over at this point. Um, there will also be no access to the site um, via Ackland Road. The proposed redevelopment of the site removes a non-conforming use within a primary residential area and the reuse of the site for housing is considered to be more compatible with surrounding land uses. Although some separation distances are not achieved within the development, such as the length of the garden spaces proposed for the townhouses and the distance achieved between the existing properties adjacent to the proposed new access road, having regard to the potential to remove a non-conforming use and the general layout of existing properties within the immediate locality, the proposals are recommended for approval, subject to a Section 106 agreement requiring the provision of affordable housing in line with the Council's current policies. Uh, there is a qualifying petition of objection. Thank you, Matthew. Is any petitioners present? Would you like to step up and uh, take your name and address, please? And then you can. Right, um, my name is George Samson, that's S for Sierra, A for Alpha, N for November, S for Sierra, O for Oscar, and N for November. And I live at 9 Rullerton Road. Right. Um, the two main concerns that we have um, is congestion and parking. Uh, now, Rollerton Road is a straight road um, and it's supposedly a 20 mile an hour limit. However, uh, traffic quite often will do double that speed. Um, it's used as a cut off to the junction of Mill Lane and Marlow and Woodstock Roads. The entrance exit uh, into Rollerton Road uh, to the proposed buildings uh, is very narrow. And I think uh, the uh, visibility would be, is impaired at this junction. Um, that's mainly the concern regarding congestion. Uh, the local residents are up in arms about the parking. Um, it's very, it's bad enough as things exist at the moment, and there is a dispute, uh, an ongoing dispute with some residents in the in the roads. Um, apparently, eleven parking uh, spaces have been provided in the property for 13 um, units. Uh, people say, right, well if, there, if every unit has one uh, car, there's going to be two over, and where are they going to park? Uh, also, visitors that will come to uh, visit these uh, units, they will presumably end up parking in Rollerton Road. Um, if I may just, uh, I think I have time, just to read uh, from a statement here from my colleague that lives in Ackland Road. One, this is an overdevelopment in a crowded, mainly residential area. Two, the roads already suffer from parking problems 
on a development of this size will make the situation worse, given there is a primary school in the area, where a one-way system has had the roads redesignated and now causes additional traffic down Rollerton Road to avoid the one-way system. The residential parking bays are already overcrowded without the addition of the extra parking for 13 extra residential units, which have two re residential access gates. Oh, I think we can scrub that one, sorry. Um, highway safety due to poor visual access of the proposed development. This would result in an increased level of traffic that will cause detrimental change to the character of the area by increased noise, disturbance, and loss of privacy. Access from Rollerton Road to the development is not of sufficient width. Insufficient parking on the development for the 13 residential units. This does, does not meet policy HS4, in brackets 3, access and services being capable of satisfactory provision particularly for off-street car parking areas and garages and adequate vehicular access. George, you've just run out of time. Oh, right. If you could just come towards the service of the tiny little bit. Yes, uh, just, yeah, just, just a little bit more. Just very, very quickly, OK? OK. Um, the proposal is considered detrimental to the highway safety by reason of the proposed narrow accesses with restricted visibility at the junctions with Rollerton Road. The scale and design of the proposal would not relate well with neighbouring properties, and the character of the surrounding area would detract from visual amenity. Okay, George, I'm sorry okay. to you. Thank you. That's fine. Do we have the applicants or the agents? Oh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name's uh, Paul Doughty uh, from SBA Architecture. I'm here to uh, represent uh, the application of my clients tonight. Um, uh, I was wondering, actually, is it possible for um, uh, the officer, uh, Matthew, to show uh, an image of the actual um, site layout plan? Yeah, that would be possible. Thank you. I was hoping it was in colour, but there you go, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the reason I wanted to show this particularly was because um, the existing site has been used uh, over a number of years as a garage repair shop for uh, industrial, semi-industrial use, uh, for taxi repair and, and commercial vehicles, and there's uh, you know, considerable amount of traffic uh, uh, accessing the site and leaving the site on, on a daily basis. The proposal is to actually uh, remove from the area what is a busy commercial uh, operation uh, and, to, and to build residential units uh, with uh, adequate parking facilities and landscaping. And the purpose, of, I wanted to show you, I do have green copies, but there's a considerable amount of landscaping included in the site and a, a lot of um, discussion uh, backwards and forwards with the planning officers took place to address the concerns of the planning officers and the residents. And we believe it's resulted in, in what we believe to be a harmonious scheme that provides uh, additional landscaping that would not exist in the area whatsoever. With relation to the residents' concerns, and we do understand that the, the genuine concerns that they have, but uh, there are 11 uh, parking spaces for 13 uh, proposed units. We could have provided uh, additional parking, but we, it was, it was um, agreed with the planning officers that we actually provide additional landscaping to provide uh, additional amenity spaces. So we believe, as, uh, as agents, that we've worked uh, with uh, the planning officers in question. It's been a subject of a number of changes and alterations to, to come up with a scheme that we believe is not detrimental to the area. Um, again, look, considering the, uh, the, the residents' concerns, 
Um, the proposed access uh, to the site uh, into Rollerton Road does not um, uh, egress into a one-way system uh, and neither is it in, in immediate location to the school. So we don't believe that the residents' concerns in this case are well-founded. Um, we do believe that uh, the scheme has been, has been put together and considered in, in a way that uh, would make good use of what is now a commercial site for uh, repair of vehicles and surely it's the view of our, our, our clients that having houses with uh, landscaping and gardens would be a better use of the site than, than currently exists. Thank you.
onto too small a site physically. I say, I think, being in the construction industry myself, I know how Paul has dealt with this one, and I'm sure he's tried his best to come along across um, with a solution that would satisfy his client. But on the other hand, I think it's too much in too small a space. Um, the other thing that concerns me is unless my maths is spread out of the window, counting those dwellings on the screen, as has been pointed out by my old colleague, there seems to be 16 properties. That's one. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the middle of the screen, and there's another. Yeah, sorry, the ones are around the floor. Sorry. If I explain the plan, the site plan is just this area here. Yeah. So this is ground floor. This is yeah, this is the first floor. So, so they're not additional units. So there's eight town, <laughs> eight town houses and then um, five and five apartments. Um, Single story here, and then two story here. Yeah, thank you for that. I assume that must be the case. But just for the benefit of those looking from the audience who are looking at that screen, they would think, hang on, somebody's got the mask on here. Anyway, um, having said all that, um, I don't believe that this particular design is an appropriate solution for this particular site. I'd like to hear what other people have to say, but I do have some thoughts on reason, genuine reasons for approval, uh, uh, refusal which I believe would be constructive in sending uh, the message to the applicant that he needs to give this further consideration. So I'll let others speak if I want to, Chair. Okay, David, anybody else? Matthew? Yeah, um, again, uh, know the site well, but found the site visit really useful. Um, I think, just like David said, it seems that although uh, it is uh, commercial in a residential area, um, like I think Paul, uh, Bernie said, we'd welcome housing on this site. There's just too much of it. Um, it's not in any way a realistic um, fit. Um, I'd like to thank George as well, who, who I think gave a good presentation around the issues, um, and certainly acknowledged the flaws with the access, which I have real problems with, because as has been stated, between I think it's 16 and 18 Bulletin Road, um, it, they're both terrace sort of properties that don't give much eye line to the road as you approach. Um, so there's real issues there. Um, and the amenity as well, and it's not just the amenity for existing residents, it's the amenity for the residents that will live in those um, dwellings. I don't think there's, there's enough of it, uh, there's enough amenity space for them there. Um, I'm not against housing, but it's just the density. And although it is an incredibly dense area, I think with that, they've, they've probably taken it to the next level. With, it, with them as well being sort of two and a half storeys in a two storey area as well. Like David, I have, um, you know, I think some solid reasoning for, for rejection on this one. But again, if anyone else wants to speak, then I'm happy. Thank you, Matthew. Anybody else like to speak? Yeah. Uh, somebody else put something forward? Yeah, if I may, Chair. Yeah. Um, it's, it's quite a long, it's quite a long-winded one, which is made to cover all eventuality, but I'll leave it to you anyway. <coughs> It is considered that the scale and design of the proposed development would not relate well with the neighbouring properties and the character of the surrounding area. The proposed development would result in a cramped and overdeveloped appearance that would be detrimental to the amenities of both future residents of the development and those of existing neighbouring properties, resulting in inadequate output for the future occupants of the proposed development and will result in overlooking and loss of privacy to surrounding properties. The proposal does not provide sufficient community space for future residents. The proposed development is therefore contrary to policies HS4, HS10, and HS13 of the adopted Rural Unitary Development Plan. Supplementary Plan Document 2, Designing for Self-Contained Flat Development and Conversions, and the National Planning Policy Framework. And I'm moving chair refusal on those grounds. Do you have a second yeah? I'll second that. So all those in favour of David's amendment?
is that this isn't a town centre, um, this isn't designated as a town centre area. The planning designation is primarily residential. So the uses that we have in the area, or in my view, to the appropriate uh, uses in residential areas. And in general, that part of Oxford Village, that has in the past been the case. But there has been a proliferation, almost an arms race, um, in terms of, um, of, of licensing um, premises in the area which has concerned uh, local residents. So that's the first thing, it's primarily residential. Second thing, I guess, is to ask yourself whether uh, a license activity till uh, half one in the morning is appropriate in a residential area. And my conclusion to that is that is, it isn't, uh, that that is far too late. Um, I've looked at uh, other um, <coughs> decisions that have been made by the Planning Committee and other decisions that have been made on appeal uh, to the, um, uh, and the, the, the lessons that are written by the planning inspectors. Uh, because I believe that these are things that we ought to weigh also uh, in our mind. And the most, um, the, the, the uh, application that springs immediately to mind is the row application in West Carey, which is a similar uh, sort of application, notwithstanding that the row itself was within a town centre use, but our concern was the primary residential areas uh, over the road. So to try and address some of those uh, issues, in a report in 2012 on the van, um, officers reported to us in respect of Riverside Court, uh, which contained eight flats, um, but was in excess of 40 metres away from the road at the time. And at that time, they uh, said to us that it would be unreasonable to dismiss those properties on the basis the pedestrian route to the elevation on which the front door is located is, is in excess of 40 metres. Noise and disturbance will travel to the elevation facing the road before this point. So at that point, because the Riverside Court was in the primary residential area, it was considered that 40 metres could potentially be, uh, be, be, um, um, uh, be, be breached. Um, in terms of immunity uh, of, uh, of, of opening hours, um, <coughs> Whilst it might be okay in the town centre um, location, uh, again, as far as the road is concerned, a comment was made on the impact on residential uh, areas and the areas that were in the prime residential area. Matthew, in his report, has, has made, um, in his verbal report, they made some reference to other surrounding uses. And this time I'm now referring to the planning inspector rather than our officers. This is what the planning inspector had to say uh, in terms of a um, of their decision on that appeal. I'm not sure what the appeal was was on, uh, but I have the appeal reference. Um, two things. First of all, the planning inspector uh, concluded licensing and planning restrictions are under separate legislative regimes with different objectives, and because planning permission runs with the landlord and the operator it does not form a material consideration. So, even though the licensing committee might have made a decision, that ought not to be a material consideration for ourselves making a planning decision. That's the first thing. The second thing is that in refusing the application, this is the planning inspector, limited weight was given to surrounding licensed operating practices. In other words, um, again, we ought not to consider other uses, other licensing uses, and other hours in the area, we should treat it entirely on its merit. That's what the planning inspector said. Now, it might be the case that Oxen Bar and, uh, and Kitchen uh, has later uh, hours, but that's potentially only because planning wise, planning wise, it's, it's outside, if you like, it's from time immemorial uh, and is only governed by the, uh, the more permissive licensing. Uh, legislation. Chair, the distance between the road and residential properties in the primary residential area is very close. The potential for noise and disturbance is very high. There have been complaints uh, in the past. There is concern within the conservation area that 
the amount of noise and disturbance to put in general uh, without uh, reference to any particular one um, uh, property. I don't think it's a use that's appropriate within the residential area. I don't think half one in the morning is appropriate. I'm happy to move some, uh, some reasons for refusal uh, once other people have a chance to have a comment on that. lived in a flat just on Rosemount um, and um, so I'm very familiar with what the nightlife situation is in that area. And I think Stuart, although you kept saying it's predominantly a residential area, which you know, you know I'm not going to dispute that, I think it uh, also needs to be said that it's always, it's always from my recollection, it's been an area that's had a lot of, not just bars, but also restaurants. Uh, well, well, you know, in restaurants, people, I mean, I've certainly left uh, restaurants in um, those months quite late. Uh, the uh, restaurant has been uh, particularly hospitable. Um, so I, I think, I just wanted to say that I think that it is known as a, um, an area that is, it has got a certain degree of nightlife. I would liken it to somewhere like Long Lane in Liverpool, which is a mix of residential and people who are out uh, having, uh, having nightlife as well. Um, so, um, I just want to take that point, really. Anybody else would like to speak? Thank you, David. Yeah, just a quick one, Chair, really. When we dealt with the row, if I remember rightly, the committee did refuse us um, at one stage. It has so many applications that I can't remember the detail of all of them. But I think this particular one, which related to opening hours, was actually overturned at appeal. Can you confirm whether that was the case? Because I think, whilst we shouldn't be considering any other development with this one in particular, we are, I think, entitled to take some note of the history of similar developments that have occurred in the past. I'd be interested to know if you could remember that. There were an awful lot of um, refusals and appeals associated with the road, but I'm not quite sure what, what the situation was in this particular 
similar application. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. I think I'm hearing what the members are saying, and um, um, it's right to say that each application must be considered on, on its own individual merits. So um, this application must be taken having regards to its own situation, its own surroundings, um, its own individual merits. But David is right also to say that there are similarities with other premises um, around the borough that may have um, some bearing on the determination of this application. But any decision that is made must be made um, having regard to the individual merits of this application alone and not the decision that might have been made for the example that has been used at the row. Um, but in answer to the question at the row, yes, the committee did um, refuse an application uh, and there were a couple of appeals against non-determination. In, term, in terms of the decisions on those appeals, um, they were partially allowed and partially dismissed. So it was a bit of a mix of both for the Thank you. Anybody else? Um, just to take it back to the actual application. Um, <laughs> with, with regards to um, the courtyard, did we ever determine what it was meant by front elevation in terms of distance? Because I know, you know it was measured initially from the door and then from the corner to the corner as the crow flies. Do we know what would sort of stand up if there were an appeal or, you know, can we have that? Uh, through you, Chair. Well, our supplementary planning document number three, um, which deals with these sorts of uses, says. Um, and it's outlined in the report, I think, on page I can't remember what page. But it talks about the main elevation. Um, and we, we've, because of footfall, and when we talk about footfall, we're talking about um, people, you know, people don't come out of windows, they come out of doors. Unless they're very <laughs> <entering. laughs> usually they would usually they would come out of a door. <laughs> Um, so that's, that's what we, that's what we, we in, in interpreting um, our supplementary planning document, uh, we talk about footfall um, through the doors. So in terms of the courtyard, the door for the courtyard, the main door to the courtyard is in this corner here. And the front door to the, um, and we are in, there are a number of premises, and I think as Councillor Spriggs and made reference to, there are a number of premises closer to the courtyard um, that have got residential use above them, but those those units are not solely in residential use. So we only consider those uh, premises that are solely in, in residential use. So the nearest ones that are solely in residential use is this block here, uh, and the front door to uh, to this block of four apartments is essentially where the two B is. And there are windows um, along the main elevation that are nearer to the courtyard. Um, and then the next nearest property is a dwelling that's just off um, just off the screen here, and that's, that's a single house. Um, but that's further than the 43 metres door to door, uh, measured in a straight line, really. Um, uh, so so that's, what, that's how we've always um, applied um, the supplementary planning document. It's about a footfall, and that's why we measure door to door although we do appreciate that there are windows um, in the area. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Chair. It's just a question to Matthew. Can you tell us the difference between the licensed premises hours and planning hours? Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Um, uh, licensing look at different things to planning. Uh, they have four set. They have four set criteria, um, and they assess a licensing application against those four set criteria. I can't tell you off the top of my head what they are, but I know one of them, for example, is is um, nuisance and public disorder, um, and there are a number of other uh, and others as well. Planning is primarily concerned with with amenity, um, and noise and disturbance comes into that. Um, so we look at we look at whether or not um, hours of operation or the use of a building will have a detrimental impact on um, residential amenity by uh, increased noise and disturbance or, or any noise and disturbance full stop, and we have to take a view um, on that from a planning point of view. Um, 
licensing, as I say, they look at different criteria. Um, and if there are no objections on a licensing application, then the licensing application uh, must be granted. So they, there is some overlap, uh, but they, they are governed by two separate um, uh, legislations. So it, it's difficult really, but there are different licensing hours on the on the court of law than there are currently in the Thank you. And then you just ask it, which overrules which? Is it the, the lesser hours? This is the, if it's lesser hours for one or the other. Three each hour, they must comply with the earliest, the earlier hours. So if <coughs> your argument say if they have licensing that allows them open to open to one o'clock, but the planning condition says it must be close at eleven thirty, the fact that they're allowed by their license to open at one o'clock doesn't overrule the uh, the planning. So it's whichever is the earlier that's when they should. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just, just very quickly, for the Oxford Bar and Kitchen side, um, I just think we should be fully mindful of that this is primarily a residential area. And just as a normal result, that's why I think. Three new chairs. Three new chairs. As members know, um, all, of the, all of the borough is, is designated as something on our. On our um, proposals map and this area is um, is allocated as a primary residential area so it's not a key town centre it's not a district centre it's not a suburban centre it is a primarily residential area but that's not to say that there are non there are, excuse me there are non residential uses within a primary residential area but the area is um, is uh, designated in the is a primarily as a residential area. Right, okay, then Stuart. In, in which case, what I'd say is that I just think in such areas, I, and as I said, Oxenborough and Borough Kitchen Side, I think open to the half one isn't a very good, I, I really do. Uh, I think you should bear in mind how it's been um, designated. And yeah, just not for me, it's not for us to change the designation. Um, sorry, sorry. I think Matt can answer the question about residential areas to the total area. That's just a generic term, basically. Um, but if I could just mention, um, I know it's been quite a lot of our friends at the very bottom then. The Elton Bar and Kitchen, that, that um, part of my map between Elton Bar and Kitchen and the outlined area of the courtyard is a, a car park to the Elton Bar and Terrace, isn't it? Kitchen. And, and if you look at the adjoining water number three, then cars could conceivably parked in the car park to the Oxton Bar and Kitchen um, residents who will be still be leaving at the later time that the courtyard wishes to be open. So if anybody was going to be bothered about noise, then number three would have the same noise element from the Oxton Bar and Kitchen to 1.30 as potentially it would be the courtyard at 1.30 in my view. Uh, and I agree with the other um, councillors, Councillor Spriggs and uh, Rayleigh. Uh, in the designation of the, um, of the area that is a mixed area. Thank you, Jeff, just a couple of points. I think, you know, uh, Stuart, when he was speaking earlier, uh, made reference <coughs> to the, the, the raw application where it was said that very little weight was given to other licensed premises nearby. And I think that's a very relevant point, very in mind what, what we just heard. Um, also, I also feel that you know one thirty is very very late for a residential area. Uh, I agree with uh, Philip on that. Um, just the point was also made earlier about there was no seating outside this establishment, which is true. But we saw on the side visit that there was outdoor heaters, so clearly there is an expectation to some degree that people will congregate or use the outside area. So I just wanted to point that out to people who haven't seen that on the side visit. That's a smoking area outside. That's where the ashtrays are. There in the smoking area. Question. Check in with your vote, please. Well, um, so Unless everyone's got any. Oh, sorry. I was going to uh, test the patience of the committee. <laughs> 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 um, I, I think, I mean, in, in 
in terms of the, the points that points that have been made that have been made for for a new day, the reason for refusal. In terms of upside, I, I, I did have it in my mind to say when we were on the side of the Joe and I made straight for the the because it, <laughs> it was a cold morning. I mean, it, it is very much the case that that, that is the smoking area. The smoking area is for half one in the morning. You know, the heaters so that it's not too uncomfortable. Is that entirely reasonable? Certainly, that will be taking place within the 40 minutes, uh, 40 meter um, uh, uh, distance. Um, but in terms of number three, number three is a butcher's shop. Uh, it may very well be a flat above, um, and that wouldn't then necessarily be covered by our policy because it's just not so residential, which is number two, which is why it only had as best we can with number two. Um, it is mixed use, that's right. There's a sweet shop, a grocery, a butcher, down contestants and various things. It's the sorts of uses that are appropriate in areas that we designate as primary residential. And, uh, oh well, and that will be there. Soon. And there appears to be a little proliferation. I agree with you that uh, half one in the morning is, uh, is entirely appropriate and too much takes place outside the park. Having that in mind, then, I will move for refusal. Um, it is considered the proposed variation of condition and resulting later opening hours would result in noise and disturbance later at night that would be detrimental to the amenities neighbouring residents should expect to enjoy at a time when ambient noise levels are lower. As such, the application is considered contrary to policies HS15 and SH4 of the Royal Industry Development Plan. Supplementary planning document three and the national planning policy framework. Do we have a second there? Your second and the <coughs> All those in favour of Stuart's proposal? application that was subject to amend the site visit last Friday. Uh, permission is sought for the subdivision of the plot into, uh, into two and the erection of a new two-bed bungalow in the new plot. The new bungalow will be located here and it's some 1.5 metres away from the shared boundary with number 10. This is number 10, this is the host dwelling number 12 and uh, the distance from the boundary here to the rear elevation of the proposed bungalow is 1.5 metres. Um, number, number 10 is a bungalow, number 12 is a house. There's a boundary fence that runs along the, um, the boundary, the shared boundary of number 10 and, and the plot. Um, and also, uh, it's not shown on this plan, but along this boundary here there's a, a an existing carport and uh, a single storey outbuilding stroke garage um, which has a pitched roof um, and that comes to roughly uh, uh, here. Um, the, presence of, so the presence of those structures um, already provide for some screening uh, from the proposed new bungalow in part and, 
And in addition to that, a 1.8 metre high close boarded fence is proposed, which would further screen the bungalow from number 10. All windows to the elevation facing number 10 are conditioned to be obscurely glazed to prevent any overlooking, but also to ensure outlook from the new bungalow is not adversely affected. Um, to that end, the bungalow has been amended to lose one bedroom. When, when the application was first submitted, this was a three bedroom bungalow. Um, the third bedroom was here, roughly where, that, where the cursor is showing on your plan. Um, and the windows to that third bedroom faced the, um, uh, the existing boundary. So the outlook for that third bedroom um, was unsatisfactory. Um, so that third bedroom has now been deleted. It's a two bedroom bungalow with principal outlook facing in this direction for bungalow two, and in the other, uh, for bedroom two, and in the other direction for bedroom one. And as I said, all the windows along this elevation uh, are now conditioned to be obscurely glazed. Um, satisfactory private garden space um, is proposed for a new dwelling. So the private garden space for this dwelling is here at the front of the, uh, of the new bungalow. Um, and also satisfactory private garden space is retained for the host dwelling here at the rear of room 12. Off street parking is also provided within both plots, um, allowing vehicles to both enter and leave the plots in a forward gear. Access to the property will be via means of a shared access from Hawthorne Drive. So this is the access onto Hawthorne Drive here. Um, and then there will be a private access road down the front of number 12 um, onto, um, onto uh, the new plot. Amenity for existing properties in the proposed new bungalow is maintained. And there would be no issues of overlooking or loss of privacy as a result, as a result of allowing the new dwelling. The character of the area would not be adversely affected and the street scene um, would be unharmed as the new dwelling would not be easily or readily visible from the adjacent highway. Satisfactory separation distances are all achieved in keeping with the council's minimum requirements. Permitted development rights would be removed to ensure the local authority retains control over any future additions and or extensions <coughs> with regard to the dimensions of the plot and its relationship with neighbouring uh, properties. The application is recommended for approval. There's no qualifying petition of objection. Thank you, Matthew. Um, obviously, there's no petitioner, so the applicant can't speak. Uh, Ward Councillor. What? Thank you, Chair. Councillor Jeffrey Walkers, Kirby Thurston Ward. First of all, thank you to the committee for coming out on the site visit. If you found it useful. Um, I, I think the objections in this case arise from probably a, a, the public's um, differing perceptions in what, um, of what planning policies and guidelines ought to be and <coughs> what they actually are. Um, to some extent, I think you can see from the, the plan of what you saw on the ground that this uh, bungalow is being shoehorned into a garden area and it's rather closer to the boundaries than you would probably choose. Uh, but that's where it is, and according to the guidelines, that's possible, as you've been told. So, so, so there you go. The access um, it also is rather strange, but also possible, as we've been told. So there we go again. Um, being a bungalow, as again you've been told, it's not really visible from a lot of places. Though um, neighbouring properties, um, again, beyond separation distances, are rather upset the thought of this being plumped into the midst of what they thought was rather well, a nice open green area but again allowed under our guidelines acceptable. Um, there are various objections with regards to um, uh, looking out from windows and being covered by conditions uh, and also uh, I think the most important condition um, with, with regard to not being able to extend it any further or take it upwards any further without further permission. So I, I think I have to admit you've got it all covered and the process has worked. And I hope that the residents will, they may not be delighted, but I think they're going to be satisfied that something has been done to uh, cover their concerns. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I like the idea that it's shoe hauled in. Um, I, I have a concern that we're in this car, we probably have four townhouses and three flats yeah. on there. 
um, <laughs> given the nature of the um, street scene, um, I can understand the concerns um, that Council Lot raised. However, I, I would say that I think it is a decent sized plot. I think the issues with access have been covered in terms of the low wall that's been put in to stop headlights shining into um, number 12, etc. So I think, I think it's actually a pretty decent development. Um, with the additional restrictions so that you can't have permitted development on it, I think that stops it, sort of encroaches further on the landscape. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Let's speak Very, very quick comment. It just shows the benefit of having voted that a site was originally yeah. provided and making a suitable amendment to take account of what the concerns of the officers were and of the residents. So I think the way it is now, it's fine. The way it was before, I must have approved it. But the way it is now, I think it's genuine.